Okay, so it's now it's saying I need to start. <laughs> so hello, this is part two of I don't know what I'm gonna title this video, so read the title and that's what it is. <laughs> kind of celebrating my birthday. I just um, it's my birthday today, so um, decided to celebrate it by showing you guys uh, the doll. That one doll that I was thinking it looks more akin to what a Kachina doll looks like. The difference between my doll and a Kachina doll is that my doll is made from cloth and fabric and I, it wasn't specifically made for a child, an infant, a toddler. Um, now check out part one and you'll see where I talk about the definition of Kachina doll and how they're um, related to or associated with the native uh, Hopis, Hopi uh, tribe. And they're the ones who were creating these dolls forever for the children, for the infants, for the dolls. Um, they, t they create them from different deities, um, depending on which deity they feel is appropriate for whatever child, I, I believe. And you can learn more and watch part one. <laughs> Don't be one of those people that watches a part two, but not a part one. That's not right. <laughs> Because just as much if, or more energy has been put into part one than part two. <laughs> so I should say this before I go any further. Hello, my name is Trina. I'm a medical cannabis patient. I partake of cannabis on a regular basis for PTSD, arthritis in both my knees and ankles, social anxiety, and a few other conditions you can learn more about through watching the previous shows on this channel. This is the Productive Cannabis Connoisseur, a channel dedicated to medical cannabis patients and adults 18 and over. As I said, there is a part one, so watch part one, please. And please do check out my bid shoot and my Black Junction TV channels. Um, YouTube brought back my channel after three months of being terminated. That doesn't mean they're going to keep it here, okay? There's people being fucked with and they got their channels back and they're still getting fucked with. So be aware of that and don't feel like everything's all good, cozy, and comfy here. It's not. I mean, it's not. I mean, you should go on over to BitChute and go on over to Black Junction TV and check out those links in the description below to show you where to go. So, and I'm also on Instagram under the name Dark Moon Doll. So I do a lot of posting on there so you can keep in track with me if you don't watch these videos on a regular basis. So, so thank you for joining me for part two. I was just getting ready to, to end it because it was already at like 46 minutes and then my my phone said nope no more because <laughs> I was thinking wow this is really going good I don't know it's been a while since I've done a really long uh, well I guess not I mean like a long smoke session like over an hour long and um, those are fun and because it's my birthday I decided I was gonna do one that's a little bit longer than 30 minutes and it went to 45 minutes so that's what part one's all about and it has me talking about a lot of the projects that I'm working on now and some of the projects that I um, have finished and put on my shop so yeah you can check out my Etsy shop it's www.darkmoondoll.etsy.com and um, on there I have a lot of different types of art and I'd like to share my art with you guys because showing you it's just magic. Cannabis is definitely a magical herb because what it does is helps to alleviate whatever symptom or whatever conditions that you've been diagnosed with. It helps to alleviate the the symptoms, the, the headaches, the pain, the chronic pain, the stress, the panic attacks. It helps to soothe that, soothe your soul. They change your energy level too. Change your uh, the energy that's around you. Change it, and um, to suit what's going on in your life currently. It's an adaptogen, so it helps you to adapt to what's going on currently in your life. That's what cannabis does for a lot of people, and I've never said it does it for all, all people. It does it for a lot of people. <clears throat> I think that a lot of people are afraid to. Uh, to relax these days because they're afraid if they relax that everything will crumble while they're relaxed and that they have to stay on edge all the time and always beware of things. Um, I think that that's not a healthy way to live your life. It just isn't. 
because I found that when you're worried all the time, you know, a lot of times it's not as bad as you would think it is. A lot of times you can get out of it just okay if you just take a breath and just meditate on it and go back into the situation with a, a more focused mind. So, I mean, I've learned that, I keep learning that every, each and every day, you know, each and every day is like a practice for, should be for everyone, a meditational practice. Your life is a meditational practice because you're learning how to deal with all these different situations day after day, different people in the world, uh, different personalities, how to deal with people with different conditions and all of that. It's it's a challenge for so many people to live amongst each other because they're so they see a lot of the differences and not a lot of the similarities. And so a lot of people want to feel special like I've got this problem and this is mine mine alone and you can't relate to that. And so then then we're separated more and more further based on the conditions we have. And with, I felt like with the cannabis community, it would be where um, we're all medicating and making ourselves feel better and helping, trying to heal ourselves so that we can help and heal others. But not everybody goes by the philosophy who partakes in cannabis. Some people just see it as a recreational thing and just to do like with their buddies, um, you know, on your birthday or uh, <laughs> on the weekend, which that's that's just how it is. It's, it's nothing me judging anyone at all. That's just how some people choose to partake in it, and that's how they partake in it, and I have nothing bad to say about that. I just know how it works for me and how I utilize it and how frustrating, how frustrating it could be the fact that I don't have the advantage to grow at the level that I used to, you know what I mean? Where I know not only could I help myself, I could help others. So yeah, that's a frustrating thing with me and talking about the government and all of their um, laws and regulations regarding cannabis. <clears throat> I'm going to feel this way about it until things change, you know, and I'm not going to stop, you know, mentioning it in, in videos until things change. Um, there was somebody who commented on one of my videos. This is right when Jamaica was talking about how they're legalizing cannabis um, recreationally. This is right about the time that this comment showed up on my video. It was a video where I was talking about my frustrations that I was having with my current landlord from way back from the last place I lived at. And this guy was just like, why are you telling us about your problems? Here in Jamaica, it's free. We can have... You know, just saying all this stuff, just flippant, you know? And I'm like, well, even in Jamaica, okay, all right, if you opened it up to where it's recreational now for for the people in Jamaica, what about the people that get arrested for selling and for growing and for having just having it on their person? Are they still in jail? It's not free if there's if people like that are still in jail. People like you and me. You know, it could easily be you and it could easily have been me in that situation. So it's just like, it doesn't matter where you come from. A lot of people are just kind of like blissful and dumbfounded and not bl dumbfounded, but blissful and oblivious to the fact that cannabis is not freed up because there's still people in prison for selling, for possessing it, and for growing it. So it's not freed up, you know, it's not. It's not It's not fair that I can sit here and smoke my pipe full of cannabis and somebody's in jail for just doing that. That's not fair at all. And we could just blissfully like smoke bowl after bowl after bowl and just be oblivious to other people and just totally absorb ourselves within ourselves. I feel like this is my way of giving back by doing these videos, just to um, speak my mind about this, because it's a very important uh, issue that um, I can get really upset and mad and disappointed in the government because, you know, I can go a whole week without having cannabis and substituting the cannabis with, like, catnip and chamomile joints. 
you know, I can get mad at them about that, but I'm more mad at them for not releasing these people, these innocent people that are doing the same things I'm doing. You know, that shit is not fair. It's definitely not fair. And um, I'm not impressed by, you know, when people uh, announce so-and-so, Snoop Dogg's got this new line strain, or Wiz Khalifa's got this strain, you know, Whoopi Goldberg is making, you know, sanitary napkins infused with uh, cannabis oil. <laughs> you know what I mean? I know that's probably not true that part, last part, bit, but you know what I'm talking about. I'm not impressed by uh, celebrities. I'm not. That means nothing. That means more money in their pocket. That's all that means. Or the people that are controlling them. More money in their pocket. So, um, I'm not really... I'm not really impressed by a lot of this shit, and I think people would expect that I would be, but I'm not. I mean, I feel like you you should be helping the people that really need help, people that are low income, people that are really suffering, really truly suffering. You know, not just make it only accessible to the the rich and wealthy people. Yeah, you can make it legal and shit, but then. Unless you have a medical cannabis recommendation, you're going to be playing like sky high prices. And not everybody can just go up and just buy, get a medical cannabis patient, a med medical cannabis recommendation if they don't have enough money to do it. If they're depending on that money, you know, for groceries or whatever to keep their bills paid. So that's the reality of what's going on here in California, from my perspective, as someone that's not, you know, in the one percent of this world you know what i mean or the people that just uh, just have it like that they're it's either you're rich or you're, or you're poor and there's no in between there's not really a middle class really here so i mean well since this is a part two I'm going to go in and show you some other things that I didn't show you in part one. So the people in part one, you saw some that the people in part two didn't see. <laughs> so, um, so part two, people in part two continue to show the art here. This is a, a one of my latest dolls. It's on my Etsy shop and it's a evil eye blue witch. And it's got two sides. It's another two-sided doll. Catch part one, and I talked to you the story about um, why some of my dolls are two-sided. Two personalities, one body. Well, two bodies, technically. And basically, it's just uh, for the face, it's like polymer clay um, over like rock. And uh, it's all paper mache onto a glass bottle. And the feet. If you can see the feet, Mary Jane shoes, the feet are made from um, paper that I painted with acrylic paints. And it sits down perfectly on a surface like that. It sits perfectly. So, yeah, the evil eye to me means protection. That's what the evil eye means to me. And I've done shows about the evil eye. Um, I've even done, I have even done a show about... Uh, about uh, I guess it was called Are You a Witch? That was on my dark <clears throat> my Dark Moon Doll channel. So, so yeah, this and the arms are made from uh, willow bark, I believe. Willow branches. Willows are really good, um, strong um, type of wood. As far as magical like energy on it, not so much as building a house with it or anything. <laughs> so. <clears throat> Here's another one. Let's go over here. Oh, it's actually um, a vase that I made, evil eye vase. It could be put on your altar for as an altar bottle. It can be used as a vase. You can put uh, you can put flowers in there, what have you. And yeah, it's paper mache. Um, it's water resistant, not waterproof, so don't leave it out in the rain. Um, with paper mache uh, the glass bottles, it makes them a lot stronger too. 
I don't suggest that you throw this out a window or whatever to test it out, but it's pretty strong. So if you accidentally drop it a little bit, um, it should be okay. So yeah. Um, I still have a whole bunch of those stash jars on my <clears throat> on my shop. I was selling them as a grouping of like um, I think it was like six for fifty bucks or something like that. But I could even go down and price it a little bit. Um, but I thought it would be cool to sell them all as one one whole grouping. Um, let me see what else I can show you guys. So we've got these earrings, I mean earrings, I was looking at the earrings. <laughs> so we've got these um, keychains, evil eye keychains. I'm selling them as a set of three and you can check them out on the, on the shop. So that's what they look like. Oh, let's turn it around. I used um, paper mache uh, technique to make these beads. So these are paper mache beads. So they're harder. Oh, oh shit! They're almost like they're almost like uh, cement. They're so hard. So that's what those look like, and they're keychains. So those are on the shop right now. Oops, let me find a bag I had them in. So yeah, a lot of good deals on there right now too. Um, very varying prices. I try to do that because um, there's a lot of people who say I can't afford to buy art all the time. So, and that's one of the reasons why I started making miniature dolls instead of the the huge dolls all the time. Because the huge dolls will take more time, but the little dolls do take a lot of time too. Don't get me wrong. I got the details. So those are these are the recent earrings that I have on my shop. These are um, the astro astrological sign, the glyph for. Um, for Leo, the sign of Leo, which is, that's my sign. That's why I'm celebrating my birthday today. So that's what that is. I'm gonna be making more of these type of earrings um, soon, and it's fabric bead is what it is, attached onto a jump ring and the earring attachment. So that's what this is. And it's hand embroidered um, many, many times over. So, um, <clears throat> I would suggest not sleeping in the earrings or wearing them in the shower. I know this sounds like common sense, but that way, and then putting them into either back into this plastic bag or into a little case or something, that way the yarn, I mean the thread that's on there that I use stays intact and it doesn't end up getting all messed up, you know, through the years of having it and preserve it and take care of it. So, yep. So yeah, I also have these kind of beads up on my shop as well. I have a set of six beads up on my shop. It's got two sides to it. There's the other side, Day of the Dead beads. Fabric beads too. See the hole there? You can use that for, um, you can use it for um, sewing projects. Here's an eye, evil eye. Another uh, hand embroidered fabric bead that I created. All the, all the art that I show on this channel is created by me, unless I say otherwise, because I did show uh, some art from a person, a really cool person that I did a trade from, so, but yeah, other than that, the art that I show on this channel is all made by myself, so another eye, it's another eye on that side, and then you see the hole, so yeah, these are good for, uh, you could put it on handbags, you could put it on your, um, well, you could make earrings or jewelry out of it, whatever you want to do with it. Oh, this is upside down because it's a heart. Yeah, it's a heart. See that? Heart with an eye in it. Yeah, this was, this was fun to make. I really load on the, uh, the thread. Because if not, then it would uh, it would close up. Is what would happen if you don't put a, a a thick application of thread on there. It'll close up, and it won't be a bead. You can still use it, but you'd have to turn it into a different type of bead where um, 
You have to put a attach a jump ring onto it. So that's one way of saving it. Is what I found. Um, where's the other bead? It's in here somewhere. Oh, here it is. Here's the other bead. <laughs> it's a little person with red eyes or red mouth, and a little blue hat and a little turtleneck. It's like a little alien, and she's got multicolored hair, white. Red and black, so it's a little cute little bead. But I'm selling all six of these as a set on my Etsy shop. So yeah, oh, one of them bop jumped out of my hand. <laughs> and like I said, whichever ones I don't sell, I end up just eventually just incorporating it into other art, like beads. I can just end up putting it into uh, the dolls I make, and then it's. Here's another one that's on sale. Pretty good sale on this one. Catch it while you can. Vodou, um Mouse, Spirit Guide, Spirit Totem, with that guy. It kind of reminds me of, uh, kind of reminds me of the Grateful Dead, those dancing bears. That's what it reminds me of a little bit too. So. Yeah. All hand sewn, hand embroidered, and made with nothing but love. Now, I've got these two beads. They're pretty cool uh, polymer clay beads. I need to put them on the shop. But I just want to show you guys. I also make polymer clay beads as well as uh, fabric beads. So, this kind of looks like candy. Huh? So, that's what happens when I mix up the colors of the beads and stuff. I never noticed that the, the hole there looks like a heart. I didn't notice that. <laughs> but yeah, that's one of them. And then there's another one. Can I get it out? This one. It's pretty much the same uh, color combination, but different pattern. See? Different pattern. Kind of has a peppermint candy vibe to it, so. I haven't put these up yet, so I'll probably put these on my shop soon. Um, I don't know if it'll be today. It's my birthday, so I'm not gonna. I'm probably not gonna. Ah, I'm probably not gonna be listing today. So what I was trying to say before I just dropped my bead. So yeah. So this is part two. I think I'm gonna wrap up part two. Pretty much just catching up on art projects. And I guess I'll feel that I'll find the bead after I turn off this video. <laughs> So thanks for joining me for part two. Please catch part one. Um, without part one, part two is just not the same <laughs> as my heart hairs falling down. Alrighty, guys, I'll puff some more of this. Uh, it's a it's a strain I have no idea the name of. All I know for sure is that it smells like marzipan. <laughs> and a bit like a fresh another fresh scent. I can't describe. See, okay, I'll have a little bit more and then we'll end this for real. <laughs> hey, we're partying. It's my birthday. Not partying like it's my birthday because it is. <laughs> Whoever's out there too celebrating a birthday this month or whatever coming month, happy birthday. <clears throat> I hope you guys do something really fun. I, my birthday, I don't know what's going to happen. I need to go take care of some important stuff and then do some grocery shopping, major grocery shopping. And. I just probably want to devote the rest of the time to just doing some art and maybe watching so, something really cool or something. You know, like, um, I just finished watching um, season two of Luke Cage, so that's out of the question. <laughs> and I was really happy when Twitch was streaming uh, the all the Doctor Who uh, episodes from the past, but I don't know if they're still doing that. So if they're doing that, I might just do, like, Doctor Who marathon, so keep your fingers crossed for me on that one, because that'll be fun. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty, I'm not as exciting as most people, you know. My birthday, what I'm going to do is create art and watch Doctor Who, or hang outside in the garden, you know, grocery shop. You know what I mean? It's, I'm celebrating it the way that I can celebrate it. If I really could celebrate it spectacularly, I'd want to go up to the ocean. That would be my big thing. Sit out in the ocean and, and collect shells and really cool stones. But because I can't do that, I'm just going to 
enjoy what, what I have. So thanks for joining me, guys. Uh, thanks for subscribing to my channel. Thanks for the likes and shares. And thank you for your kind comments. If you'd like to subscribe, I mean, subscribe to this channel, that'd be great. But please do check out my bid shoot and my Black Junction TV channels. Uh, TV channels, my Black <laughs> Junction channels. Because, like I said, this this channel could be gone overnight. It's wiped off of YouTube again because they don't like what I'm doing. And I refuse to change it. I've already got two channels where I'm not partaking in cannabis or really talking about it that much. Um, so I'm not worried about that because I have two channels on here already. And I just have this one that's suspect. <laughs> so please do check out Bit Shoot and Black Junction TV. Um, as I've said before, so um, if you'd like to support this channel, you could donate a dollar more to my PayPal at kdaddytmama at comcast.net and include a question you'd like to see on an upcoming show. It's not required for you to pay to watch this channel, but people have asked how they can support this channel and my other channels, Dark Moon Doll and um, Healing with Color, and that's how you can support it, either of those channels by doing that. Not a requirement, so... Thanks for joining me, guys. Uh, brightest, brightest blessings to you all. And I hope you guys take time out in your day to do something that's relaxing and that um, replenishes you. Because we've got Mercury Retrograde coming up soon, guys. It's just around the corner. It starts on the 26th. Not trying to scare anybody, but um, this is a good time to, to get yourself grounded and to get into a practice of meditating, like, like at least twice, you know, in the morning and the in the evening, so that you keep yourself grounded and bombarded and protected from negative, you know, random energy being tossed your way, if you know what I mean. I'll be doing a a, a video about um, that matter that I'm talking about. Mercury retrograde. I try to do a video each time it starts up. So that way you can um, have an idea that maybe the way that you feel like you want to react isn't completely in your control and that um, the planet's alignment, the moon, the sun, all of that does have a pull on us emotionally. So that's why I do those kind of videos so that you see that Get a, you know, check in with yourself through meditation so that you don't do things that are totally out of your character. So, alrighty, guys, best blessings to you all, and please do catch part one. If you don't catch part one, I'll know. <laughs> Ooh. One more puff. That was one puff. Now it's going to do two, no, three, and then we'll get out. That's two. Three.